Welcome back to a new episode of Gods, Myths, and Legends. In this episode we will cover the complete story of the god of war, Ares. Ares is one of the most renowned figures in Greek mythology, known for wielding immense power and influence. He is one of the Olympian gods and represents the raw violence and untamed aspects of war. His role is significantly different from that of Athena, who is also associated with warfare, but is more aligned with strategic battle plans and wisdom in war. Varied forms of the god exist in different works of literature and art. In one version, he is seen as a destructive and destabilizing force that brings only pain and suffering, while in some heroic sagas, he is portrayed as a valiant warrior who aids heroes in their quests. Ares embraced the violent and physical side of warfare and was always depicted as a killer with little remorse for his actions. He was known as the Destroyer, personifying brutality, violence, rashness, and insensitivity. He engenders a kind of war that is cruel, chaotic, bloody, and focused on massacre and destruction, in contrast to other gods associated with war, who represent other aspects such as discipline, strategy, or just cause. He often commands a fear and respect that few Greek gods do. He is feared by both mortals and immortals alike, due to his uncontrollable nature and insurmountable power. Despite or perhaps because of his terrifying reputation, Ares is often accompanied by other violent and fearsome entities. Dimos and Phobos, personifications of terror and fear, were often seen accompanying him in battles. Though Ares was a son of Zeus and Hera, he wasn't as widely worshipped in ancient Greece as many other gods. Nonetheless, his influence on Greek mythology is significant, and we see his impact on today's pop culture in countless ways. So, get ready, grab your sword and shield, because we're about to march into the world of Ares. Part 2 Birth and Parentage Ares, in Greek mythology, was said to be the son of Zeus, the king of the gods, and his wife, Hera, the queen of Olympus. Being born to the king and queen of the Olympian gods made Ares a pure Olympian. Unlike many other Greek gods whose parentage often included one mortal parent, Ares was entirely divine. He belonged to the twelve Olympian gods, the principal gods of the Greek pantheon, who resided atop Mount Olympus. He also had a host of siblings, both full and half. His full siblings are Hebe, the goddess of youth, Hephaestus, the god of fire, blacksmiths and crafts, and Ilithia, the goddess of childbirth. It's worth mentioning that in some myths, Hera bore Hephaestus alone as revenge for Zeus having Athena with Metis. In addition to his full siblings, Ares had many half-siblings, thanks to his father Zeus's numerous affairs. These half-siblings include prominent figures like Apollo and Artemis, twins born to Leto, Hermes, the son of Maia, Dionysus, the son of Semele, Athena, who sprang full-formed from Zeus's head, Perseus, son of Danae, and Hercules, son of Alcmena. Though not as wild as his father Zeus, Ares too had several love relationships and children. His most renowned and enduring affair was with Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, who was ironically married to his brother Hephaestus. With Aphrodite, Ares fathered several children, including Eros, the god of love, and Teros, the god of requited love, Phobos, the personification of fear, Dimos, the personification of terror, Harmonia, the goddess of harmony and concord, and Adrestia, the goddess of revolt, just retribution and sublime balance between good and evil. The birth and lineage of Ares illuminate the complex family relationships of the gods on Mount Olympus and provide insight into his personality and actions in his various mythological narratives. His character and demeanor seem to be heavily influenced by his familial relationships, especially his rivalry with his brother Hephaestus and his tumultuous love affair with Aphrodite. But the fact that he is a pure Olympian also sets him apart, making him one of the most powerful gods in Greek mythology. Part 3. The Tales of Ares Ares is significantly present in numerous tales and myths across Greek mythology, often reflecting his propensity for war and conflict. From his illicit affair with Aphrodite to his participation in the Trojan War, each story portrays a unique aspect of this complex character. Arguably the most well-known myth involving Ares is his affair with Aphrodite. Despite being married to Hephaestus, Aphrodite couldn't resist Ares's charm and fell for him. 
their clandestine relationship was eventually discovered by Hephaestus through Helios, the sun god who saw everything. Hephaestus managed to ensnare the two lovers in an unbreakable chain link net for all the other gods to see, but it only ended up making Ares more popular due to the sympathy shown to him and Aphrodite by the other gods. Another myth in which Ares prominently features is the story of the twelve labors of Hercules. In one of these tasks, Hercules was required to retrieve the magical girdle of the Amazon queen, Hippolyta, in which Ares played a vital role. The Amazons are a tribe of warrior women, and Hippolyta is the daughter of Ares. Ares, being protective of his daughter, took the side of the Amazons in this battle against Hercules. The Trojan War epic, as told in Homer's Iliad, is perhaps the most famous tale of Greek mythology. It tells the story of a fight between the city of Troy and the Greeks, lasting a decade. At the outset, Ares, the Greek god of war, was on the side of the Trojans, mainly due to his relationship with Aphrodite, the Trojans' key divine supporter who was also Ares' lover. As the god of war, Ares loved conflict and bloodshed and actively participated in the war. He fought alongside Hector, the Trojan prince and greatest warrior. However, Ares switched sides after he was wounded in battle by Diomedes, a Greek hero. Athena, who favored the Greeks, guided Diomedes' spear and inspired him to attack Ares. The spear wounded Ares and he retreated from the battlefield, screaming so loud that it frightened both sides. Zeus, who was Ares' father, told him to not return to the battlefield. Following this, Ares switched his loyalties to the Greeks. This change of loyalties showcases one of the key characteristics of the Greek gods in mythology. They were fickle, spiteful, and their support could be as much of a curse as a blessing. In another tale, Ares was put on trial for murder in the court of the Olympian gods. Ares had murdered one of Poseidon's sons, Halorotheus. Halorotheus had made an audacious attempt to assault Alcibi, the daughter of Ares. When Ares found out about this act, he was filled with rage to see his daughter being treated in this manner. In his fury, Ares killed Halorotheus as a way of defending the honor and safety of his daughter. This event led to a significant trial, known as the Trial of the Hill of Ares or Areopagus, where Ares stood charged with murder. Instead of moral justices, the Greek gods themselves formed the court, with Zeus as the primary judge. Ares was ultimately acquitted, the first case of justifiable homicide in ancient Hellenic law, as he acted to defend his daughter from violation. The momentous event marked the establishment of the precedent regarding a father's right to protect his children and served as the foundation for the legal and cultural customs of the ancient Greeks. The place of this trial, the Hill of Ares or Areopagus, is a real-life location in Athens, which was considered to be the place for trials of murder, wounding, and arson, including cases of death curses in ancient Greece. Another story narrates Ares' imprisonment by the twin giants, Otis and Ephialtes. These twin giants were the sons of Poseidon and the mortal Iphimedia, and they were notorious for their great size and strength, growing enormous in size at a young age. They were very mischievous and caused much trouble for both gods and humans. For some reason, the twins decided to wage war against the gods of Olympus, and in the course of this, they managed to capture Ares, the god of war, and trapped him in a bronze jar, or in some version of myths, in a bronze chair, where he remained for thirteen months. During this time, Ares was unable to participate in any battles or wars. He survived but was severely weakened and unable to escape. The troublemaking twins continued to stoke chaos in his absence. Arabia, the stepmother of the twins, reported his captivity to Hermes. Hermes, who was known for his cunning and trickery, was able to rescue Ares without being seen by the giants. The capture of Ares by the giants did not end well for them. Otis and Ephialtes were eventually killed by Artemis, who tricked them into killing each other, ending their reign of terror. Part 4 Comparison Examining the portrayal of Ares in comparison to other gods gives a deeper understanding of his character and role within the pantheon of gods. Ares and Athena While both are gods of war, their approaches to warfare are wildly different. Athena, the goddess of wisdom, embodies the strategic, intellectual side of war. She is revered as a just and noble warrior who embodies bravery, skill, and wisdom. 
On the other hand, Ares, the god of violent warfare, embodies the raw, bloody, and chaotic aspects of war. He revels in the frenzy of battle, cares only for the thrill of victory, and does not reason or strategize the way Athena does. His bloodlust and ferocious temperament were feared by mortals and even by his fellow gods. Also, while Athena was highly revered in Greek society, Ares was not as much respected or liked both due to his violent nature and because the Greeks, as a civilization, valued wisdom and strategy over raw aggression. Ares and Mars To understand Ares better, it's also worth comparing him to his Roman equivalent, Mars. Although they are often seen as equivalent, the Romans perceived Mars differently. While Ares in Greek mythology is more of a destructive and destabilizing force, Mars, on the other hand, was seen in a much more positive light. Mars was the second most important deity in the Roman pantheon after Jupiter. He was also a god of war, but unlike Ares, he embodied not just the violence and aggression of war, but also protection and defense. Mars also had agricultural attributes and was considered the divine father of Romulus and Remus, the legendary founders of Rome. Ares and Aphrodite Even in his romantic relationships, Ares's nature stands out quite starkly. His affair with Aphrodite, the goddess of love and beauty, provides a unique contrast. Here, the god of war brutality personified gets entangled with the goddess of love pure beauty and grace personified. Their saga reflects an unconventional romantic bond and brings together two divinely powerful yet emotionally contrasting figures, making their relationship one of the most interesting legends in Greek mythology. Part 5. Worship of Ares The ancient Greeks had a very distinctive relationship with Ares, which differed quite significantly from their reverence towards other Olympian gods. Ares was both feared and respected due to his violent and unpredictable nature. Most ancient cities preferred to worship Athena and other deities who offered protection and beneficial gifts. Ares, known as the deity of havoc and violence, was not a favorite among the Greeks. He was seen as a necessary evil, considering the frequent wars in ancient Greece. Therefore, while not widely worshipped like other deities, his significance could not be ignored. However, there were some cities and regions that had a strong bond with Ares. Sparta was one notable example. The Spartan society, famed for their military-orientated culture and toughness, worshipped Ares as a major deity. Ares had several temples in ancient Greece where he was worshipped, but they were significantly fewer than other gods. His primary temple was located in the city-state of Aetolia in central Greece, where he was considered as a founding hero. In Athens, Although Ares was not a significant figure, there was an open-air altar in the classical agora dedicated to him. The Areopagus, the rock of Ares located west of the Acropolis in Athens, is said to be named after Ares. In Sparta, where military strength was greatly cherished, statues of Ares were common, and young males about to start their training in the army were richly beaten at his altars, a challenging ceremony to please the god of war. Even in his worship, Ares represented both the physical courage and the unforgiving, ruthless ravages of war. Sacrifices to him were not typically livestock, as they were for most gods, but instead included unusual offerings like dog, symbolizing the unending vigilance soldiers needed in war. Part 6. Iconography and Symbolism Ares, in ancient Greek iconography and symbolism, is closely associated with several distinctive symbols. Each of these symbols is deeply related to his identity as the god of war and provides key insight into his character and roles within Greek mythology. Spear and Shield The spear and shield are among the most common symbols associated with Ares, representing his role as the god of war. These weapons, essential in ancient warfare, denote his martial skills, his aggressiveness, and his power in combat. Helmet the helmet, another notable symbol, signifies his role as a warrior. It's a recognized symbol of protection, demonstrating Ares' invincibility and strength in battle. Vulture Among the animals, the vulture is often associated with Ares. This bird, known for feasting on the remains of the dead, echoes the aftermath of war, death, and loss. It symbolizes Ares' connection with the darker and destructive side of warfare. Dog 
Interestingly, the dog is another animal symbol tied to Aries. In this context, dogs, particularly wild dogs, represent the fearless and loyal qualities of a warrior, attributes associated with Aries. They also connect to the grim aftermath of battles, as dogs were often seen on ancient battlefields, feeding on the dead. Chariot Aries is sometimes depicted riding a chariot pulled by four fire-breathing, golden-bridled horses. The imagery of the charging chariot represents speed, power, and dominating presence on the battlefield, further underscoring Aries' association with warfare. The Bloodlust Circle This geometric symbol represents the unending circle of war and violence that Aries was believed to both cause and revel in. Through these symbols, one can get a glimpse of Ares' persona and his various aspects as a warrior god. They each subtly describe his martial prowess, his aggressive nature, his fearless demeanor, and the destructiveness of warfare which he embodies. They help in understanding the multifaceted nature of Ares, the ferocious and formidable god of war in Greek mythology. Part 7 – Portrayal of Ares in Modern Culture the fascination with Greek mythological stories has transcended time, and the portrayal of Ares in modern culture embodies this enduring interest. Portrayed in various forms including literature, movies, television, and video games, Ares continues to be a relevant figure in contemporary popular culture. Ares appears in numerous books, both as a primary and secondary character. In Rick Riordan's Percy Jackson series, Ares is presented as an antagonist who delights in chaos and conflict. Ryarden's depiction of Ares underscores his traits of recklessness and cruelty, consistent with his portrayal in classical mythology. In the world of comic books, the character of Ares is employed by both DC and Marvel. DC Comics frequently presents Ares as a nemesis of Wonder Woman. On the other hand, Marvel's Ares starts as a foe of Thor and Hercules but later becomes a complex anti-hero and even a member of the Avengers at one point. In the realm of film and television, Ares has also left his mark. He is the main antagonist in the movie Wonder Woman, 2017. In the popular television series Xena, Warrior Princess and Hercules, The Legendary Journeys, Ares played a crucial role as an anti-hero and sometimes even as an ally. Video games have not been left behind in incorporating Ares in their narratives. Games like God of War, where the protagonist Kratos seeks revenge against Ares, and Smite, a multiplayer online game where players can play as deities including Ares, are popular among gamers. Ares' portrayal in modern culture tends to focus on similar traits defined in ancient myths. He is frequently shown as a disruptive force symbolizing war and conflict. Still, some interpretations have added complexity to his characters, showing him as an anti-hero or even a flawed hero rather than a straight villain. Reinterpretations of Ares, his stories, and his relationships, particularly in line with evolving moral and cultural norms, highlight how flexible and adaptable these ancient myths can be, continuing to engage audiences and provoke thought thousands of years after they were first conceived. Part 8. Insights the stories and myths featuring Ares can offer various lessons and insights when analyzed and interpreted from a broader perspective. Here are a few key takeaways from the tales and legends surrounding the god of war. War and its contradictory nature. One of the main lessons from Ares' tales is a deeper understanding of the nature of war. War, as personified by Ares, is chaotic, brutal, and often tragic. It is unavoidable in certain circumstances yet does not offer an ultimate solution. Thus, showing that while it might be necessary sometimes, it is ultimately destructive and devastating. Resilience in the face of criticism Despite being less liked or even hated among his fellow gods and humans, Ares never retreated from his nature or tried to adapt to become more likable. He was fearless and persistent, unaffected by criticism, demonstrating that one could indeed endure negativity and stay true to oneself. Consequences of Impulsiveness On several occasions, Ares' rash actions led to negative outcomes, either for himself or others. His impulsiveness often clouded his judgment, leading to unnecessary disputes and conflicts. These stories drive home the importance of self-control, strategic thinking, and deliberation before action. Understanding Aggression 
stories of Aries also throw light on the scope and impact of unbridled aggression. Aries, with his violent and ruthless nature, often ended up in trouble and conflict. His narratives provide valuable lessons on the importance of tempering aggression with wisdom and restraint. Reflection of Society Aries, as the god of war, reflects the society and circumstances of the era in which these myths were written. The constant warring states of ancient Greece made a god of war an integral part of their pantheon, highlighting the deep relationship between mythology and the cultural context of its time. That concludes today's episode on Ares, an embodiment of the violent and chaotic nature of war. A figure who was both feared and worshipped, who played a defining role in the tales that shaped ancient Greek culture. Make sure to hit the like button if you enjoyed our exploration of Ares, and don't forget to subscribe so you won't miss out on our future mythological adventures. As always, thank you for watching and until next time, keep exploring these ancient worlds that continue to captivate us with their timeless tales.